Welcome everyone to part four in this series on implementing unfamiliar project stories using a two-step methodology. If you haven't already watched the first video, we examine that methodology, so I encourage you to watch it because it will help you understand today's topic, as well as any implementation story that you're dealing with. In this video, we're going to be troubleshooting an implementation story, and the story reads, as a process owner, I need a fulfillment process for my catalog item so that the fulfillment is standardized. Now, you've probably created service catalog flows in the past, but let's have a look at this one. And let's apply our methodology. First, platform components. What platform components are or can be used to build a fulfillment flow for catalog items? In this case, the answer is clear. It's Flow Designer. What about baseline functionality? In some instances, you may find a baseline service catalog item request flow, which is provided as a template for you to copy and modify. But in my instance, however, I've already got a simplified fulfillment flow that simply creates two service catalog tasks. But it has a problem. Once the flow ends, the request and the requested item records remain open. Why? And this is what we're going to troubleshoot in this video. So how do the requested item and request records actually close? What is the baseline configuration? before we just go in and just add actions in our flow to close those records. Many of you may already know the answer to this. And this is actually what we teach in one of our training courses. You know, when the last service catalog task closes, the parent requested item automatically closes. And when it is the last remaining requested item record, the parent request also automatically closes. Let's have a quick look at the documentation. In actual fact, you'll find nothing here on this. And we could search the community and support sites, but let's put our platform knowledge into practice and let's try to figure this out for ourselves. So let's go back to our methodology. What platform components could be used to implement this, to close these records? Business rules, flows, script actions. So let's examine the business rules there are for the service catalog request item table. Now, I'm just going to search here for all business rules that contain the string CLOS, so for close or closing. Okay, so there's a few different ones here. Let's pick out some ones that look like they may apply to our particular case here. So I'm going to open up this one here called Mark Closed. Okay, it runs whenever it's the record is inserted or updated. And if we have a look here, it's actually referencing a script include in the condition. And if that condition is true, it's going to set the active flag to false. So let's check out that script include. It's the task state util one and the run mark close function in it. So let's go ahead and open that and find that function. So first of all, we can just look at the comments to the script without actually going through each line in the code here. And you can see that it's actually checking to see that uh, the record has already moved to the close state, which is not our case. So in this case, this isn't the script that we're looking for. So let's go back to our list here and open up this one here, request item closure. Again, it's going to run on every insert and update. And there's also a condition here where the stage actually changes to request cancelled um, or not requested. So kind of like a cancelled state here. So this is actually not what we're looking for either. So let's go back to our list and go to the last one here, task closer. Again, the conditions are the same when the record is inserted or updated. Again, we've got a condition here that references a script include, the task state util, so the same script include we just looked at. But this time the run task closer is the function for the condition. And if that evaluates to true, we are going to execute Another function in that same script include called get default close state. In other words, to set the current state to that close state. So let's examine that run task closer function. Okay, so we can see here that uh, it's kind of looking for a condition where the active flag changes to false. And we're not doing that yet either. So we're not sure how that is working yet. But once that occurs, so if the record is still open, and it's in a supported table, which it is, uh, we are going to close that. 
we are going to close that requested item record. So here, the kind of key thing here is that the active flag changes to false. If we do that, then the system will set the state of the requested item to closed. Okay, we could go through and see exactly what state the default closed state is, but let's just assume that it is the, the closed state for the requested item. So let's go back to our business rules for our requested item table. And this time I'm just going to search for business rules that contain the word active, you know, for the active flag or the active field. And we've got this one here, set active flag. So let's open up that one. Again, look at the conditions on an incident update, fine. And if we have a look at the condition here, we're seeing to see we're looking to see if the stage of the record, so not the state, the stage, it's a different field, uh, changes to complete or cancelled or some other closed state here. And if that is true, it's going to set the active flag. If you look at line two, it's going to set the active flag to false. And then when that occurs, that other function in that other script include is going to set the state to closed. So that looks like the key here. We're not setting the stage in our flow to closed. And because we're not doing that, these other script includes are not triggering. So now we know the solution. We now know that our flow is missing that section, that action. Well, it's not really an action, but we should look at it right now. We need to set the stage to complete. And we do that in our flow, not with a traditional action, but with just a this stage here that you can see I've already got for fulfillment and delivery. So we need to add another one to set the stage value to complete. But if you look here, I can't actually set one as the kind of the last operation here after action number two. So what you need to do here is to add another action. And in this example, I'm just going to add an action to create a log entry to say that the phone has been fulfilled. And now that I've done that, I can add a stage just above that and set that to completed. Okay, These stages here come from a standard stage set for service catalog item flows. So I'll do that, save and activate the flow. And now we can go ahead and test it again. So I'm going to order another iPhone 15 here and have a look at the request here. Okay, the request date is approved, so it's still open. We've got a requested item record here. I'm going to open that in a separate tab. You can also see that the stages appear here. This is actually what is communicated to the requester of this device. So let's open up that requested item. I've got a service catalog task here. I'll go ahead and open that and close it. And that will generate the second service catalog task. I'll open up that in a new tab here and close that. And now if I go back to my original tab, we can see here that the requested item stage has been set to completed, but also the state now has been set to close complete. Okay, so the flow took care of the stage and those two business rules, the task closer and the set active flag business rules, took care to set the state to close complete for this requested item. And because of that, there is another business rule that will take care of closing the parent request. So we don't need to worry about that. So now we've successfully troubleshooted our issue. Now we could have spent time searching the community and support portals for an answer, but sometimes it's just quicker and easier to investigate ourselves and in the process do some learning. However, I can tell you that these business rules are contained in the course book for the ITSM implementation training course. Our courses often identify best practices and features not always present elsewhere, which is why it pays to attend our training courses and learn the platform and its applications in a systematic way. So in this video, we used our knowledge of platform components to examine and uncover baseline processes for automatically closing requested item and catalog request records. This behavior is not officially documented, so we needed to use our platform knowledge. And rather than replacing existing functionality to explicitly close the requested item and request in the flow, we simply set the stage of the requested item record to complete and let the platform configuration take over and do the rest.
In the next video in this series, we will be examining a single reference qualifier to uncover how an entire feature in an application works. So stay tuned.